Director General of the Foreign Ministry, Director General of the Prime Minister's Office. And you're hearing the introductions uh, of each of the people coming forward to greet John Paul II. The Greek Orthodox leader. On behalf of the Greek Orthodox Patriarch of Jerusalem, the Orthodox, I am welcoming you. A blessed pilgrimage. Very glad, very glad indeed to have you here. Greek Orthodox Patriarch there warmly uh, welcoming the Pope. I believe he is the successor to Timothy, yes? Uh, the Apostle Timothy. And Michael Sava there, the Latin Patriarch. And the Muslim leader there coming forward. Rather tense handshake there with Ehud Barak when the Muslim shake his hand. You'll notice uh, there's some reserve on his part. But everyone seems to be smiling and having a wonderful time. I, 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 I must confess, I haven't seen such enthusiasm at a welcoming ceremony. Uh, normally, these are very uh, clinical affairs. Very stiff. Very stiff and um, joyless, I, I, I have to say, with the exception of the crowds who normally are so overwhelmed by the presence of the Pope. But the dignitaries normally are very stiff. Not this crowd. Cardinal Lechicare, the Jubilee Committee. And this is members of the uh, curial, Roman curial uh, party coming forward to greet the uh, local officials. Pope is smiling his heart out. Bishop Marini. And these are members of the, the uh, pontifical household and, and uh, private secretaries of the Pope. Coptic church. Coptic church leaders. And you can always tell that they have those little uh, rounded uh, hats. They control in the uh, Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the, the innermost part where the sepulcher is, mm -hmm. they control one end of it where they have their altar. And as you go in to celebrate Mass in the Holy Sepulcher, go around to the back side and you'll find a little tiny Coptic altar where the Coptic priests are officiating all day long. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Uh, we will talk about that as the Pope ventures toward the uh, Holy Sepulcher, the divisions and how that church is divided. This is President Weissman uh, welcoming the Pope to Israel. Unfortunately, we do not have um, a transcript of this speech, so uh, we are, uh, we are attempting to locate uh, a transcript of the speech so we can bring you a translation of this speech. why don't you come? We are now uh, listening to the welcome speech by uh, President Weissman here as they welcome Pope John Paul II to the State of Israel. He's just landed from Jordan. 
I have a press release here from the chief rabbinate of Israel, which is uh, fascinating as we, uh, they are welcoming the Pope and they say, we welcome one who saw fit to express remorse in the name of the Catholic Church for the terrible deeds committed against the Jewish people during the course of the past 2,000 years, and even appointed a commission for requesting forgiveness from the Jewish nation with regard to the Holocaust. So that is, um, that is quite a coup for the chief rabbinate to come out and welcome the Pope. They, of course, the chief rabbis of Israel will be meeting with uh, His Holiness later in the week. So um, not only a head of state, but a great religious leader comes to the land of Israel. And he is welcomed by both religious leaders and, uh, and the uh, political heads. Now that comment by the, the rabbis will, over the course of the next several days, require a lot of explanation because uh, we would not want people to get the wrong impression that the Holy Father is taking the blame for the Holocaust, no. which is not at all what he said. And as we know, some people may try to spin it in that direction. Not to say that the rabbis here did, right. but we, we need to further develop that thought so people don't misunderstand. And I don't think they were referring to, uh, to this recent plea uh, a few Sundays ago. Uh, I think they were referring to the, uh, the document that came out about a year ago um, on the show, remember right on the yes. show. Remember the show. I, I believe that's what they would be referring to. But no, the, the church has never um, accepted that sort of uh, charge that they were in any way to blame for the Holocaust. In fact, history seems to tell a different story. We are listening to the address of President Weissman as he uh, welcomes the Pope. Unfortunately, we were not provided with a uh, translation for this address, so only those of you who speak Hebrew will be able to interpret what's, uh, what's transpiring here. The Israelis have promised to try to depoliticize this event as much as possible. Um, resisting the temptation on all sides, I think, to uh, try to jockey for advantage here. The Pope is there reading a, what appears to be a translation of this address. While we listen in, I'll read a couple of, um, couple of emails uh, that we've gotten in. Dear Raymond and friends, thank you so much for televising the Pope's visit to the Middle East. With all the Pope seems to be doing, will he be able to spend much time in private prayer at these holy sites? I understand that he is on his own personal pilgrimage, but it seems that he has had very little time to stop and pray. Thank you and God bless Cynthia Hines, El Eliria, or Illyria, Ohio. It's in your neck of the woods, Patrick. Yeah. I'm sure the Pope will not get nearly as much time as he would like. <laughs> and uh, it's just part of being the Pope. When you go right. like this, you, you are going to be giving yourself to everyone around you. But there are a fair amount of private visits to the grottos. Now, this is John Paul II's greeting to the Israeli people as he arrives. Or just quickly add, too, that the Holy Father does rise very early and get in yeah. personal prayer time, no matter where he's at. That's true. You know. Dear President and Madame Weizmann, dear Prime Minister and Madame Barak, dear Israeli friends, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, yesterday, from the heights of Mount Nebo, I looked across the Jordan Valley to this blessed land, Today, it is with profound emotion that I set foot in the land where God chose to pitch his tent and made it possible for men to encounter him more directly. In this year of the 2000th anniversary of the birth of Jesus Christ, it has been my strong personal desire to come here and to pray in the most important places which from ancient times 
have seen God's intervention, the wonders he has done. You are a God who works wonders. You shout your power among the peoples. Mr. President, I thank you for your warm welcome and in your person, I greet all the people of the State of Israel. My visit is both a personal pilgrimage and a spiritual journey of the Bishop of Rome to the origins of our faith in the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. It is a part of a larger pilgrimage of prayer and thanksgiving, which led me first to Sinai, the mountain of the covenant, the place of the decisive revelation, which shaped the subsequent history of salvation. Now I shall have the privilege of visiting some of the places more closely connected with the life, death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Along every step of the way, I am moved by a vivid sense of God who has gone before us and leads us on, who wants us to honor Him in spirit and in truth to acknowledge the differences between us, but also to recognize in every human being the image and likeness of the one creator of heaven and earth. Mr. President, you are known as a man of peace and peacemaker. We all know how urgent is the need for peace and justice, not for Israel alone, but for the entire region. Many things have changed in relations between the Holy See and the State of Israel since my predecessor, Pope Paul VI, came here in 1964. The establishment of diplomatic relations between us 1994, set a on efforts to open a year of dialogue on questions of common interest concerning religious freedom, relations between church and state, and more generally, relations between Christians and Jews. On another level, on another level, world opinion followed with close attention the peace process which finds all the, all the peoples of the region involved. In the difficult search for a lasting peace and justice for all, with newfound openness towards one another, Christians and Jews together must make courageous efforts to remove all forms of prejudice. We must strive always and everywhere to present the true face of the Jews and of Judaism as likewise of Christians and of Christianity. And this at the very level of attitude, every level of attitude, teaching and communication. My journey, therefore, is a pilgrimage in a spirit of humble gratitude and hope that the origins of our religious history, it is a tribute to the three religious traditions which coexist in this land. For a long time, I have looked forward to meeting the faith of the Catholic communities, the rich variety, and the members of the various Christian churches and communities 
present in the whole land. I pray that my visit will serve to encourage an increase of interreligious dialogue that will lead Jews, Christians, and Muslims to seek in their respective beliefs and the universal brotherhood that unites all the members of the human family, the motivation and the perseverance to work for the peace and justice which the peoples of the whole land do not yet have and for which they yearn so deep. The psalmist reminds us the peace that peace is God's gift. I will hear what the Lord God has to say, a voice that speaks of peace, peace for his people and his friends, and those who turn to him in their hearts. May peace be God's gift to the land he chose as his own. Shalom. Mishmar Yavon le Dom. Mishmar Dom. A Mishmar Yachtif et Nishko. Achtef, check. Without cushions. Without cushions. This is EWTN's live coverage of uh, the Holy Land, the Pope in the Holy Land. I don't know if you heard me before or not. I was. Uh, we were talking about the, the Black Hawk helicopters that the Pope will be uh, boarding momentarily to go to Jerusalem. Uh, this helicopter has been outfitted with uh, plush cushions and carpets, special staircase to accommodate the Pope throughout his visit. Believe it or not, the Air Force, the Israeli Air Force, actually sewed special material in the carpets into the helicopter to uh, make it amenable to the Pope and comfortable for him throughout his visit. Black Hawk helicopter, of course, uh, an American-developed uh, helicopter and provided to the Israelis, no doubt, by the American military. Interestingly enough, the Star of David on the side of the helicopter, uh, th which is emblazoned on all the military equipment in Israel, is removed from this Black Hawk that uh, the Pope will be traveling in. And of course, security concerns make it uh, necessary for him to travel in that sort of uh, vehicle. The Pope here with President Weizmann. See if we can listen in. There's a waiting car, which I imagine the Pope will uh, board, and then he'll make his way to that helicopter en route to Jerusalem, the sacred city where he will spend the night. For those of you who'd like to contact us via email, we are available to you at holyland2000, holyland2000 at EWTN.com. That address is holyland2000, all one word, no space, at EWTN.com. We want to welcome all of you listening in via AM, FM radio, watching us on television, shortwave, and the internet. I'm Raymond Arroyo on set with Father Francis Mary Stone, Father Kevin Treston, and Patrick Madrid. We're very pleased to bring you the entirety of this papal visit. It's the most complete coverage you'll find anywhere. And we are privileged to bring it to you throughout the week. Now an email, uh, thank you for your fine coverage of the papal visit to the Holy Land of Israel. I am a Jew from Long Island, New York, 
and there are tears in my eyes. The Pope's visit and known feelings toward the Jewish people are a true sign of the spirit of Christ's teaching. This is Ellen Venice in, uh, in Long Island. Well, we thank you, Ellen, and uh, are proud to uh, have you watching and extend our hand of friendship. Uh, to all of our Jewish brothers and sisters, who the Pope call our elder brothers in the faith. And it's important to remember that Jesus himself was a Jew and born in Islam. And, you know, Pope Pius XI, he reminded all of us that all Catholics are spiritual Semites. We're all spiritual Jews mm -hmm. uh, by virtue of the fact that we are children of Abraham. And really at home nowhere until we <coughs> go to our <coughs> final, final home. Another email. This is a very interesting one. Um, this is Dear uh, EWTN. The coverage and impact of the Holy Father's visit to the Holy Land is incredible. It's truly a sign of his unifying position as Vicar of Christ and visible head of the Universal Church. The reality that the Pope's trip brings together so many people of all faiths is proof enough that he truly represents the mission of Christ and by his presence and his word proclaims the gospel message of peace and love to the whole world. Many in the Orthodox Church criticize the Holy Father's activities and also criticize some of their own leaders who choose to pray together with Pope John Paul II. If they were only to look at the signs of the times, they would understand that where charity and love prevail, there God is found, not in a false attachment to triumphalism and self-righteous sentiments of a different era and time. Long live Pope John Paul II and his mission of goodwill to all people. This is the most reverend Michael Champion of the Ukrainian Ocephalus Orthodox Church. Auto, Autocephalus Orthodox yes. Church. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Orthodox father uh, writing us. Wonderful uh, message there, and uh, certainly the Pope has gone through, um, through enormous effort to reach out to our Orthodox brethren, attempting to bring both the lung of the East and the West together. And I think we will see that echoed and mirrored in this visit. And we saw the Greek Orthodox patriarch there uh, greeting enthusiastically the Pope as he arrived. And um, welcoming him in a, in a beautiful way. This may indeed be a bishop, I'm not certain, um, uh, who, who wrote us from the Orthodox Church, but I thank him for that email. It was uh, quite beautiful, and uh, I, I'm sure the Pope would be gratified to hear that. Here's another one. Dear gentlemen, first of all, thank you for allowing us to witness this most historic event. How privileged to be able to see the places where our Lord walked, especially during this holy season of Lent. Please clarify for me the two sites of Jesus' baptism, which was mentioned during today's commentary while the Holy Father was still in Jordan. Thank you and blessings. Mary T. in Valley Forge, PA. Father, I'll let you explain um, those two contested sites uh, of the baptism. So we begin with the idea that there are five sites that are contested. Mm -hmm. And of these two, one is on the east bank and one is on the west bank. Right. And so it's just that one is seen as more traditional because of scriptural uh, evidence, archaeological evidence, and history of the church, the evidence of history of the church. So the site we saw today has a lot of the evidence. And the one on the other side is one of the other, other places. Mm -hmm. So there, uh, there's always been, of course, wrangling because one is on Jordanian territory and one right. on Israeli territory. Right, and the preference would be to venerate the one on Israeli territory because that's the access is easier to those visiting right. the Holy Land. Right, right. But it seems. But she only saw one today. Right, and this yeah. one is seems to be the more ancient site. Right. Yes, yeah. according to archaeologists and uh, and those who are versed in such matters. We certainly right. don't want to weigh in. But the Pope will visit another site, the other site in Israel tomorrow as part of his uh, pilgrimage. We also, we were seeing images a moment ago of the Black Hawk uh, attack. There it is, the helicopter that the Pope will be traveling in. It's a fearsome looking vehicle. Uh, not quite the pretty white uh, uh, helicopter we normally associate with the Pope. But for security reasons, <coughs> uh, he has to travel in this sort of uh, vehicle. And of course, the uh, Israelis are very concerned about making this journey safe as yes. can be. They, they want no problems, particularly on Israeli soil, during this visit. Uh, the, now, the, the helicopter pad where the Pope will land 
in Jerusalem was defaced, which we mentioned yesterday mm -hmm. in our coverage. Uh, some Israeli extremists uh, wrote Pope Go and defaced some of the welcoming banners and things, again bringing up the Holocaust and uh, where the Pope was during the Holocaust and that sort of thing. In point of fact, as we will see at Yad Vashem, the Holocaust Memorial, later in the week, the Pope will meet with s many friends from Radovice in Poland, his Jewish friends, boyhood friends, who uh, all claim that there was not a stitch of anti-Semitism in this man. In fact, he cast his lot with Jews in many cases uh, during the Nazi oppression and, and the subsequent yeah. communist uh, occupation of that land. And several of them actually stepped forward and said the whole family. Many of you, uh, mm -hmm. an 80-year-old man stepped forward <coughs> and said I knew his father personally. There is no sense then mm -hmm. of any anti-Semitism. And a great love for, for the Jewish people as we uh, mm -hmm. saw from our friend uh, a moment ago in Long Island saying that, uh, congratulating our coverage and that is uh, certainly welcome praise indeed. Uh, dear friends, this is indeed a joyous occasion. I'm so happy to be home today to see the program. I pray and hope that peace and joy will blossom. This is Josette in Trinidad. Lovely yeah, right. email from Trinidad. And uh, finally, could you please explain the spiritual significance of the Pope and the Cardinals wearing the head coverings? Many people understand why our Jewish brethren wear the yarmulke and why our Arab and Muslim brethren cover their heads, but I'm not sure if people understand the reason that the clergy of the Catholic Church wear head coverings as well. Thank you. Who wants to take a crack at it? It's the idea of the... Um, we wear them ourselves, used to in the Franciscans. They're called solideo, which mm -hmm. means for God alone. So the head covering is remembering that our life is dedicated to God, and we have to remember uh, practically before that there used to be a, ta a tonsure was given to the friars or to the bishops and right. so your head was uncovered it's a little cold sometimes uh -huh. <laughs> so that was pr a practical way of covering that space mm -hmm. but it does have to do with being dedicated to god uh as as in the uh, jewish faith also the idea of the presence of the divine and you cover your head in the presence of the divine as moses took his shoes off in the presence of holy right. holies so there are different different meanings but the same idea that they're dedica dedicated to god 